Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe del Valle de Bojoaque Church, the San Juan Diego Chapel, for the celebration of the Sunday uh, Mass on the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us take a moment to acknowledge our sins and ask God for his forgiveness as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. And together let us praise God by saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The responsorial psalm. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, Lord let, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accused and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people. My kindred, according to the flesh, they are Israelites. Theirs the adoption, the glory, the covenant, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. Theirs the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. After Jesus had fed the people, he made the disciples get into a boat and proceed him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Then Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. My friends, uh, I'm sure that at some point in our lives we have been terrified or afraid of something. And that's why we can identify with Peter. I was thinking to myself that when I was just a little boy, I took my first airplane ride. And uh, I can't remember exactly how old I was, but my family put me on the plane by myself. It was a DC-3, which means it was a propeller airplane, just two motors in an unpressurized cabin and we were flying from uh, Tocumen International Airport in Panama to San Jose de Costa Rica. I was so excited. You know, I think every little boy uh, plays with airplanes and things like that. So we get on this little tiny airplane with maybe 40 passengers and about halfway through the trip we were being tossed about violently by winds or something and I was terrified. I started to cry because I thought we were going to die and the story that came around and said it's okay it's just a little wind and uh, when we finally landed in San Jose it was only an hour's flight I said to myself, I'll never do this again. Well, famous last words, I've been flying ever since. <laughs> um, and the jets are wonderful. But anyway, um, we have all experienced a moment of terror, I am sure, especially the older we get. And here we have uh, Simon Peter. And Jesus had just finished uh, feeding the thousands. Remember the gospel from last week. There were 5,000 men, not counting the women and children. I, and I've always said where there are 5,000 men, there's 5,000 women and children. So there, there were a lot of people there. And he miraculously multiplied five loaves of bread and two fish to feed all of those. And they took up uh, a dozen wicker baskets full of uh, pieces left over. Anyway, after that, Jesus dismissed the crowd, but before that, he asked the disciples to get into the boat and follow and go on to the other side of 
the Sea of Galilee, which is really a lake, and precede him over there. Uh, Jesus wanted to dismiss the crowds, and the Gospel of John says that the reason why he wanted to dismiss them is because they were getting ready to make him king, and that's not what he wanted. And so after he dismissed the crowds, he goes up onto the mountain to pray, and you will notice that in many instances Jesus went up to a mountain to pray, to be uh, one with God, to, to, so that there was so that he would be free of distractions, something that we sorely need in today's day and age, my dear friends, because we live in a most distracted world, beginning with the phones. And so Jesus goes up to pray, and he spent quite a bit of time because the Gospel says that it was on the fourth watch in the night that he began to walk across the water towards them. But before that, the winds had picked up and they were tossing the boat around and they were beginning to be afraid. Well, when they saw this person walking towards them, they cried out, it's a ghost! Which I guess you would normally do if you had never seen anyone walk across water. And Jesus cries out and says, calm down, don't be afraid, it is I. And then Peter says, well, if it's really you, tell me to come across the water, uh, walk on the water. And Jesus says, come. So Peter gets out of the boat and he starts walking across the water. But I think when he begins to realize what he's doing and the winds and everything, he starts to doubt and he starts sinking. And what does Peter say? Lord, save me. And Jesus stretches out his hand and picks him up and saves him. But I, I love that story, folks, because the moral of the story has nothing really to do with walking on the water. Yes, it was, it was miraculous. I mean, I've never seen anyone walk on water. But that's not the point. The point is the, uh, the point is discipleship. What does it mean to really be a disciple of Christ? In our modern day and age, in Roman Catholicism, a disciple means, well, you get baptized, you receive your first communion, you go through confirmation classes, you get confirmed, and you come to Mass and receive the sacraments, if you come to Mass. But that's not the meaning of discipleship. Discipleship is a lot more than that. As followers of Jesus, like the disciples themselves, we're going to be asked to do things sometimes that are a little bit risky, maybe, or dangerous or frightening, if, especially if we live in places where Christianity is not accepted. And our first task is to recognize who Jesus really is. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the Son of the living God. He is God Himself. He is the Son of the living God, and we are asked to put our trust and our faith in Him. What did Jesus say to Peter when he was speaking? Oh, you of little faith. In other words, he could have walked right across to Jesus on the water. That's the first thing. Um, you know what? It sounds like some of the things that we do in life, like marriage, or becoming a priest, or just in getting ourselves involved in ministry. These are risky things because we don't know what the future holds. Oh yes, when a couple gets married, it's just it's it's uh, it's uh, love and, and and champagne and dancing and this and that and the other. But then things begin to change over time, and it's the same thing with the priesthood and the same thing getting involved in ministry of the church. It is serving God is what we are doing. The second thing, uh, the second part of this. Um, of this story is to take that step outside of the boat and come toward Jesus. In other words, Jesus was asking Peter to get out of the comfort of the boat in spite of the storm and walk on the water. And Peter took that second step, but he doubted and he began to sink. You know, sometimes this happens. 
do us. You know, we are disciples, we are, to, we are asked to follow Jesus, and we are asked to help spread the good news of Jesus Christ to, to all whom we meet. And sometimes we are asked to do social justice activities, sometimes we are asked to help the poor and the marginalized, sometimes we are asked to help the undocumented families. And if you have been watching the news lately, there was a terrible explosion in the country of, of Libya. And uh, we're going to be asked, I'm sure, to help those poor people get back on their feet. But these are all risky things. But if we truly believe in Christ, if we truly put our trust in Him, Jesus is saying, do not be afraid. It is I. In other words, God will be there in spite of the storms that we have to go through. And look at the storm that we have to go through nowadays with the COVID-19 pandemic. This is something that we have never ever experienced in our lives. You would have to have lived through the 1918 um, uh, pandemic of the Spanish flu in order to understand what people are going through. But this is all new. But folks, the Lord is telling us, trust me. We will get through this. This too shall pass. And remember his words to, to Peter. Do not be afraid. It is I. And that's all we need, folks, in order to be truly disciples and followers of Christ and to do his bidding. Trust in him, love him, and do not be afraid. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are going to recite the Apostles' Creed as our profession of faith now. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now we take a moment to offer our prayers and petitions to our most wonderful God. For all civil and religious leaders, that they will heed the wants of their people by prompt action so that their lives will be improved. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all parents, that they may live out their vocation by constant attention to the problems and concerns of the children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all caregivers, that they may discover in the example of Jesus the inspiration and the dedication necessary for finding self-fulfillment in serving others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all educators, that they may be always aware that besides imparting knowledge to students, they must also instill a sense of providing for others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for this week's Mass intentions, for the repose of the souls of Michael J. Royval and Ray Royval, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for the repose of the soul of Peter Royval on his birthday, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for all deceased members of the parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. I'd also like to pray for the repose of the soul of my mother, Hilda Preto, um, on what would have been her birthday. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. prayers. Also, for the people of Japan, on the 75th anniversary of the bombing of Nagasaki and Hiroshima, that uh, nuclear bombs may never be used again. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. Gracious and loving Father, we thank you for the inspiration and example of your Son, Jesus. We dare to ask you that we too may find a sense of fulfillment in meeting the needs of our sisters and brothers, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Bless and ignore God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless, Bless and ignore God for earth. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, also work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for, 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 for all his holy church. O Lord, be pleased to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know that it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ Jesus our Lord. To him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence. May our voices blend with theirs in joyful praise as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we beg you sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, Jesus took bread in his hands and, giving you thanks, pronounced a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands and confessing in mercy gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all peoples, and may he keep us in communion with Francisco, our Pope, with Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, who is quite ill, 
uh, with John Charles, our Bishop, Michael, our Bishop Emeritus, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her husband, both Saints Cyril and Methodius, with the blessed Apostles, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race, nation, and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now at the Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every who will graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all danger and distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your loving Church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. And let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth and proclaim the gospel by your lives. Thanks. Thanks.